Greetings, my fellow heretics. It is the Ash Heretor. Welcome back to Rogue Trader. Today, we are on the Plizen... Plizen Pranatoid. Yep, I said it. Rykati Philia. Oh, God. I should probably just restart the intro and, like, pronounce it correctly, but... No, no, this is how it goes. You come here for, uh, mediocre quality content, and that's what you're gonna get. Uh, so let's, uh... <laughs> Let's Always proceed keep onwards your eye on the prize. and see. So we can, yeah, head down into the open pit. I think I like the idea of the open pit, considering all of the nice things that we've already found here on this prison, sorry, prison pranatoid. Uh, every time you, you're in, like, a place, and it's bad, and you find the pit, it's always worse. So I can only imagine what we're going to find here. Uh, let's go. <laughs> Let us not do Yeah, so we saw this thing from up above. It looks like some sort of lens reflecting the uncolors of the warp. I'm sure this is a wholesome device where nothing evil happens at all. Uh, can I poke it? No? Okay. Uh, what, what do we got here? The accretions on the outside of the structure indicate some regularly occurring natural phenomenon. Oh. Possibly poison gas emission. Yeah, that does seem to be the case. Oh, God. This isn't a poison gas emission problem, though. That's just... That's just body spike to giant wall spikes problem. I don't think the poison gas did that. Also, oh, that there, that's that's not poison gas. That That is that is heresy. Argento's probably blowing a gasket right now. I always right have now. a backup plan. Oh, hi. Oh, hello, it's the warden. I thought we were going to have to uh, search for you a lot more, but apparently here you are. I guess we're going to be solving this problem really quickly. I, I thought there was a whole lot more to this episode, or this place so that's why i ended the episode where i did but uh, apparently i probably should have just finished this section because i think we're about to get the conclusion to it right here i told you heavy they are hiding so much from us arrogant mentors holy brothers and sisters what have they ever given us nothing but a pile of fibs and useless admonitions the voice of the man sitting with his back to you sounds almost soft okay i'm doing that right heedless of everything but what is in front of him? He leans over a prisoner dressed in expensive clothing. Hmm. Can we make anything out about this prisoner? Oh yeah, he is dressed in expensive clothing. Um, you know what? I'm just gonna go out on a limb and assume that this is Heinrich's something. Um, the interrogator. Like, so interrogators, of course, uh, as I mentioned, are basically the right hands of inquisitors. Not literally, but you know what I mean. Uh, there's a whole lot of cause for an Inquisitor to be investigating what is happening right now on this prison moon. So I'm just going to put two and two together and assume that that's him. I can't zoom in far enough to detect any sort of heraldry on him, but I just want to make this guess so that we're all perfectly clear and I can say, you know, that I was right afterwards because, you know, that's fun. But Aurora, she is different. She spoke with me like no one ever had before. She revealed the truth to me, and now I can reveal it to you if you stop struggling for one minute. What? The man finally realizes he is not alone and turns to you. He's clutching a long, thin metallic rod with blood dripping off of it. We have guests from the Von Valencia ship, I would wager. Evie, my dear, you will have to wait. No, okay, it's Evie. Maybe not. Do not faint, I beg of you. It's important that you feel everything, including your other eye. So remember, they, they found something. They were interacting with something in the pit. Like I said, everything in the pit is always better. I mean, worse. As the warden is speaking, a strange sensation draws your attention towards the ground, specifically an open pit in the loose dirt. Oh, maybe this one that's filled with, like, probably cherry juice? A single word spontaneously surfaces in your mind. Cradle. Oh, good. The pit itself does not appear to be of much interest, but at some point, it housed something of great importance. Something faintly familiar to you. Now, I don't like this whole faintly familiar to me stuff. I can do without it. The warden's words are suddenly drowned out by a chorus of voices in your head. The entity that still dwells in the recesses of your mind rejoices in a cacophony of cries. This place, it holds certain significance for the entity. In the frantic chanting of the voices, you can almost make out words that speak of an ancient grave, one that was opened, for it contained a priceless treasure, 
a most coveted prize that was retrieved by the faithful after a centuries-long search. Oh my god, this is... This is pointing me more towards the Yuvath. Alright, again, I'm not going to explain what the Yuvath are. Just remember those words. We'll see if I'm right later. Um, definitely Zinch. And, I mean, we know that the Entity stranded us in this star system with really only a few ways to go. And this was one of the places we would logically investigate, though not one of the ones we specifically had to investigate. Which is interesting. But nevertheless, we were drawn here. We came here, and, uh, we came here, and we found something. The entity, this, uh, I don't know if it's the Edge of Daybreak, but it's at least serving the Edge of Daybreak, or whatever you want to call it, um, that's in our head, led us here. Such dreadful shades. Cassia recoils and covers her mouth. The colors of this place, they are putrescent to the core, and these people... The colors are oozing with madness and despair, pain and doom. What madness have you wrought in this prison? Do you truly want to know? He becomes more animated and runs a hand through his matted hair. You note it has been some time since he last trimmed his nails. This is my garden, where I tried to grow the seedlings of a beautiful future. That was before I realized that there is no future. Not in the sense ordinary people understand. We are too attached to this life. To the limitations of our weak bodies. To the short-sightedness of our eyes that can scarcely see. It is also insignificant. The true future lies beyond real space. And the only way to reach it is through a cleansing sacrifice. Do you understand? You know. We had this guy once. He was a quiet one. One day he walked into the middle deck bar. Threw one back and then pulled out a gun and started shooting people left and right without saying a word. Uh, then he shoved the barrel in his mouth and blew his brains out. Our warden here has exactly the same look in his eyes right now. Yep, yep. Does seem that way, doesn't it? That pit. There is something special about it, is there not? An item of value was once buried there. Now tell me, Warden, what was the item and who took it from here? The Warden uh, The Warden's gaze bores into you. Then he smiles with the corners of his lips. You are too late, enemy of the truth. This bastion has already fulfilled its great purpose. You will never find the trail of the reclaimed relic that now rests in the hands of the devout. And who is Aurora? He was talking to Aurora. Oh, so you've managed to barge in here and interfere with the Prophetess's designs without even knowing who she is. But it is too late now. You will never attain sight. All you can do is accept your fate. He stirs. He suddenly stirs like a predatory beast. I do not like it when the people take the Prophetess Aurora's name in vain. I desire your death, enemy of truth. The Warden raises his hand and the maimed people start thrashing about in their death throes. The time for words is past, Optimates. Give your power to this harbinger of Aurora. Let our foes see the truth or become awash in blood. You will beg for mercy, but I will grant none. Yeah. Are you ready to die? All right, so we're going to put Abelard not up there. I'm going to put him right here in the thick of it. Uh, he's going to be standing next to the pit. I hope that's going to be fine. I'm sure nothing bad will happen. Argenta is going to be right up here. Maybe even right up here where she can shoot over at whoever the hell she damn well wants. Cassia is going to stay right here in a bit of cover. She's a bit squishy. Um, I prefer her not to die. Idira will go there and I will take a position behind this, this fucking thing, whatever it is. I, maybe I shouldn't be up here with this thing. This thing looks very sketchy. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it's nothing. It's just a, it's just a normal lens emitting colors that don't exist. It's fine. Nothing, uh, nothing warp related. Ah, fucking. So we can't. I wish you could jump in this game. Baldur's Gate's got that over this in terms of, uh, mechanics wise. Um, I feel like I should be able to walk across that, but uh, apparently not. Uh, what do we 
do? What do we do? What do we do? Uh, I mean, I can always charge, so. We, we just gotta get in there. That's the that's the warden. Kill him first. Abelard Alpha Strike. Do it. I would like to be able to tag him with an ability or something. We could also throw a gas cloud grenade and then charge. Might actually be kind of good. Like, what's the radius on this? Maybe I should actually read that. Creates a toxic area which lasts for four rounds and deals eight toxin damage to anyone who enters the area or starts the round inside. So if I were to say throw this right here. Not bad. And then. Oh, it's an attack. No, I can't. No, I can still charge. It's fine. I, I was I was lying to myself. At your and to you. Call. I apologize. He buried. Okay. Uh, do I brace for impact? Indeed. I think so. He's about to take a whole lot of bullshit. So we're we're gonna use that right now. Um, hopefully he'll survive. <laughs> we are gonna forewarn him, but the enemy is going to be able to act first, or at least some of them will. So we shall see. You are shooting at Argenta and failing. Good on you. He started his turn in the gas! Clearly he didn't, but I thought he did. That's disappointing. I'll see right, to it. Forewarn Abelard. I, I feel like we should probably give him prescience as well. Although, I mean, it's possible they have a psyker somewhere. Like, awoken prisoner. I don't know what that means, but it's probably bad. We'll give him voice of command. On it. It's, it is pretty cool to be like a buff bot, I will say. It's as good as done. All right. Now that he's juiced up, we're going to give him voice of command, which is going to allow him to uh, give... Give this chump right here a good old wallop, which is only going to cost us one action, which is also going to allow him to... In Ooh. No, I don't use this. We hit him, and then endure. God damn it. Stop parrying. Victory is imminent. Rude. I'm investing resources into damaging you, and you're not taking damage. How could you do this to me? Um. Alright, well, uh, that's my turn. Argenta! You kindly shoot that one, maybe? Yeah, I mean, we, we gotta also clear out the other enemies. I, I think I managed to, like, hit none of them in the gas cloud, which is a bit disappointing, but it is what it is. As yeah, just shoot him. Commands, maybe that'll, maybe it'll be a one-hit kill. <sighs> Plus, got tank the bolter shot to the face. We'll use run and gun and not run. We'll just stand here and shoot again. Because, uh, you know, that's a function Down of this ability. You don't have to run. You can just gun. Strike is a prayer. He is now just a pair of legs. I mean, there is still a torso. Credit where credit's due. All right. What are you going to do? You're a guard. You actually have a, a last gun, right? Ow. That, that was painful. What are you going to do, Tablar? You missed. All right. Two can play this parrying game. Jerk. Okay, Cassia coming out here is a risk, so we're going to... to cross my gaze. Yeah, that also. And, uh, ooh, what do we do? We got four action points. I would like to use Held in my gaze. I would like to use Voice of Command. I would also like to use Bring it down, but we, we can use it on him again. Holy shit. Uh, let's drop a Voice of Command on Argenta so that she's getting buffs. Okay, then we're going to use Bring it down. Or I use Bring it down on Argenta so that she can shoot people. No, we're, we'll use it Isn't on Avalar. This, this is amazing. Uh, so we could have him... No, I'm going to actually have him do this. Do uh, Mark for Death. At your beck and call. He's got endurance yeah! up, so... Now, we can whack him. Hopefully, this time it's actually going to hit. 56%. You can do it. I have faith in you. 18 damage. It's not bad. He's got a lot of health, though. <laughs> All right. What else can you do? Held in my gaze? Do we, do we hold him in, in, in her gaze? He's not going to like that. And what else does it do? It immobilizes, right? Yeah. Whereas you're in the gas. I think you're in the gas. You would also just die from that? Fuck it. Just die. we got to pick off these uh, ass. Die with grace, at least. Yep. He is he is dead. Cool. Good job, Cassia. Cassia is cool. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure about her character yet. Her character is cool. No, no question there. Just not sure about we'll do. how I feel about her character yet. She wasn't already prescienced or uh, forewarned, right? I don't think so. All right, we're going to analyze the warden here. We're good. We could psychic scream him, 
Or I can attempt to do sensory deprivation and blind him. I think I'm gonna do that. But of course. Nice. Alright. So, he has been sensorily deprived? That's... Yeah. Huh? Who next? A bunch of, uh... Until the start of the operative's next turn. That would be 10%. Or 10 plus... So 12, so 60% reduced dodge parry in armor. Right? We'll do. That's what's gonna happen. Screw it. Do it. Maybe it's not 60. It's probably less than that. Okay. Well, you shot your allies more than you shot me, so I'm okay with that. What are you doing? You're just coming this way? Same with you? Alright. Good stuff. All nicely grouped up. Okay, Abelard. Abelard's gonna do Abelardy things now that he's weakened. Indeed. Should be able to land a good hit. <clears throat> Solid. 21 damage is good. We could charge to get him out of immediate combat. Hit that guy, kill him. I mean, we That's may as well make cool. use of our, our mobility if we can. It's gonna trigger an attack of opportunity, which is gonna be parried. I took care and of this one. he, you did indeed take care of that one, and then we're gonna endure. Alright, looking good. Fuck that railing in particular, I guess. <laughs> okay, drop a forewarning on Cassia. She's in the I'll danger zone right now. So, we don't need her taking any damage, and I will actually drop a prescience on Cassia, because she can actually use the willpower and the perception. And we're going to cast Bring It Down on Abelard. Never mind, we're going to cast Bring It Down on Argenta. Alright. Argenta, if you would kindly shoot the Warden 62%. I mean, now's, now's the time to do it. Yeah, do it. His, his defenses are reduced. What about... Fully automatic bolter fire in this direction. What's that going to do? 0%. No, it's 27 there. No. It's standard bolter round. As the Emperor commands, Shoot I him. Act. Eight damage. It's not the best. Um, run and gun won't work here. Furious recital won't work. Yeah, that's about all we got. So, that's, that's that. I'm done. And now it's Argento's actual turn. So, what we can do is advance a little, which I, I think I want to do. I want to get into a slightly better position. I think I want to go here instead. Okay. And then we can shoot the Warden again. Faith without deeds is worthless. Or we can miss. That's cool. Can't run and gun. Why can I not run and gun? Till the end of the next turn, you can't use run and gun. Okay. You can only use that every other turn. Good to know. Uh... Yeah, I would like you not to die. Thank you for missing. Awfully nice. What's going on here? Getting parried. Alright. Uh, Cassia. Oh, look at all these people all nicely grouped up together. I mean, Abelard's there too. So this might be a bit of friendly fire, but I kind of want to lidless stare them all. Right, it would stun him, but it would kill... It would quite possibly kill two of them and stun three enemies. Do it. Oh, my ears. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Wait. Oh, he, he fully healed, did he? Uh. I'm closer for. Okay. Uh, that's a problem. Can you only use one navigator ability per turn? Would make sense. That would be a good limitation on it, since it's not increasing this. Um, I reckon that's probably what's going on here. Anybody can use voice of command. Let's put it on uh, blast here. And uh, that'll be my turn. I'm in a little bit of a precarious position, but I can't move anymore, so that's, that's that. Blast? Oh, you can move through allies. Okay. You're going to move up to here. And I think we got to... going to do analyze. Anything else? I feel like we should expose weakness yet again. 
Is this actually doing anything? Yes, it's just his hot bar of debuffs was, is full. Was that you? <laughs> I'm going to blind him again. Boy. We could also drop another forewarning. I'm going to put it on uh, myself on since we're a little bit in closer. I think uh, Sirene's out of the way enough that she's not going to be threatened by anything. There is still that guard over there, too. Yeah, there's two of them, even. Um, okay. Ooh, he's he's going to go for the high ground. Smart, actually. From the ashes, yeah, Argento's getting rise. kind of fucked up. That was a good flanking attack on his uh, on his part. Okay, so, uh, we've got to deal with this My Morton place is at the fall. So, you're gonna use Sworn Enemy on him, because he is your Sworn is Enemy at this point. Ah! No one likes him. And give him a hit. That's gonna do back a fair bit of damage if it hits. Good hit. 15, very good. Drop an Indeed. Endure, and we're not gonna be able to charge, so that's, uh, that's that. Oh, there's another one. There's three. Okay, Argenta is down. Is Injury is not an excuse to shirk one's duty. We can shoot the unholy lens. Can we hit the unholy lens? Five to eight damage. Oh, I bet we gotta destroy this. Was there one here? Yeah. Well, that's not good. Okay, I didn't even see that. Something's going on. I am putting myself into a bit of danger, so I'm going to forewarn myself now. Now everyone's forewarned. I am also going to drop a presence on Idira. Who if not me? Because she can benefit from that. And uh, I think we can not use that on him. Nor that. Nor this. Could do uh, voice of command. I'm going to use voice of command on Cassia. And I guess what we can do is shoot the unholy lens. No, it's not really going to do anything. We could shoot the Warden in 25%. This is going to do almost nothing. I, I guess I'll shoot the Lens, see what happens. Zero damage, cool. Uh... Brace yourself, Avalon. Yeah, he's sensor sensorially deprived, which is too bad Step for him. aside. The Navigator is coming. All right. Not the lidless stare, but rather held in my gaze on you. It's going to do a lot of damage and immobilize I'm not accustomed to being ordered around. That did a lot of damage, indeed. Anybody can benefit from this. Idira can. We're going to do it. The veil right now is looking okay. It's it's seen better days, to be sure. Can I psychic scream the lens? Apparently, we can psychic scream the lens. What does that say about the lens? Can we warp lightning it? Apparently not, but we can psychic scream it. That's uh concerning. I'm not so sure. Can't do that. I only got two action points. I'm going to use analyze on Anything the warden is. again. And then I am gonna psychic scream this lens. I kinda wanna destroy this. Zero damage, cool. It told me I might be able to do more, but alright. That's uh that's that's a shame. Well, anybody can take voice of command? I don't think so. I think we're. Oh, I, I can am give a sorry. navigator, Why the hell not? not a servitor. All right, Idira. God, um, we don't have anybody except for Abelard that can reliably take out the, uh, the ones here. I. I know can, what is to come. Yeah, you can only move on to there, and then you're going to be exposed. Either way, you're going to be exposed, which is not ideal. Um. Could Psychic Scream him, it's gonna do more damage. Could do a Sensory Deprivation on this guy, I'm gonna do it. We are uh, getting a bit of Veil Degradation here, but that's fine. A little bit of Veil Degradation never killed no one. We'll analyze him, and then I'm gonna Psychic Scream him. Was, was that you? That was a lot of damage, 31 damage. I don't know what's gonna happen. He may resurrect and appear over here in front of this lens. But I'm assuming these lenses can only be used once for him, so if we were to take out the lenses beforehand, uh, this fight would have been easier, but... I think we're too all-in at this point. Um, he still has no net or Sworn Enemy, right? No, he does not. I'm gonna drop Sworn Enemy just to make sure we kill him. Kill him! An exemplary strike. And what's he gonna do? He's gonna appear before this one right here, yeah, indeed. Okay. Hi. Uh. Well. 
That's a problem. An expected problem. To be sure. But still a problem. Can't get to him. Can't get to him. Not much we can do except for endure, so I'm gonna endure. Hope that we survive the crossfire. This guy's almost dead. Okay, Cyrene. I don't like that he's very close. Now, where, where is he, actually? Oh, there's the third one. Jesus Christ. Are there any more? I think it's just the three, right? It's just this one that needs to be activated. I kind of... I, I, I really want to just destroy it, if I can. So I'm going to try. I'll see to it personally. A damage? It's something? Uh, I will Presience it's Abelard just because... And can we voice of command anybody right now? I don't think so. We can voice of I'll command Adira. I'm gonna do it. Okay, so we're gonna get bring it down on her. She is going to cast a good psychic scream, this guy. We cannot psychic scream that guy. We can blind him though. Because you're blinded, you're not. Can't target you though. Can target you, can target Audience. you again. I'm gonna target him again. Just to make sure. And then we're going to uh, analyze enemies on uh, this we'll guy, do. too. We'll do. Alright. Get some debuff going. Cyrene, you're done. Alright. We're gonna shoot. Pain Shooting and an Abelard. Go hand in hand. Okay. Cassia here is in a bit of danger. Can this only be used on a target once per encounter? Is that what's going on here? Hmm. Well... Uh, this is the Lidless Stare, right? That should hit both of them? Apparently not. We'll kill that one, though. Do it. Isn't this a job for the serfs? We'll kill that one and then dealt some damage to that lens. Didn't actually hurt him, though, which is interesting. Uh, I should have moved away, but I didn't. So, that might be a problem. Okay, we'll, uh, use voice of command. Right there. Hopefully Cassia can take a hit. I'm assuming not. She doesn't seem particularly tough, but we'll see. Uh, he's still sensorily deprived until it's permanent. Okay, I didn't need to recast that on him at all. And you are? Are you sensory? You got sensory deprivation? You do not. We're going to cast it on him too. So we're going to make sure that they're all blind. Okay, we had to move up for that. That's okay. Further what analyze enemies. Life. Psychic scream him. We'll do some damage. Gonna we'll do. make our veil degradation go higher, but that's okay. I'm willing to accept that. We're gonna shoot, and I was hoping you'd miss, but he did manage to hit. Both of these guys are blinded. I think I'm just gonna take that one out. We'll leave. We'll leave him for now. So we're gonna run Try here. Tested tactics are the best ones. And charge him. That'll work. Reduce to dust. Fucking critical hit, or at least hit at enough. Back and call. Endure. Okay, Cyrene. Take out this lens. I don't know what happens if you take out one of the unused ones, but I would really like it if he didn't get a third revive. <laughs> We're just not doing very much damage, mostly because Cyrene is not meant for breaking large inanimate objects. It's just not her thing. Any voice of command options here? We can Honest. voice of command Abelard. Uh, that wasn't worth it doing, because he can't move. He can charge. Don't think anybody's in range, though. Then it's just gonna have to uh, be a Daka. We can Daka there. No, we can't Daka anywhere. This was a waste of time. Um, <laughs> I could charge the lens. Can't charge the lens. Okay. Could charge here. Hey, you know, it does actually allow you to move. So... We gave him a bit of extra movement. It wasn't actually worth it, though, but it wasn't completely useless. I don't think I'm doing anything else, so I'm just going to hope that 
Wow, Cassia parried. Good job. Held in my gaze. If I may. Pin him in place, if you would. That triggers an attack of opportunity, so casting. I guess this does count as casting. Triggers that. Good to know. Uh, I'm glad that's a mechanic, actually. I wish they still had that in D&D, &D, even though it would screw me over a lot. But uh, Casting, you have to take a specific talent, and then you can do it. So, I guess it is still in D&D, &D, technically. Just a bit different. Um, so, uh, we're going to Psychic Scream him. Although, again, I want to I wanna kill this lens. So I'm going to Psychic Scream the lens. Zero damage, again. So, it says we can do damage to it, but we cannot with that. Gamepad detected? Uh, what? I do not have a gamepad. So, I don't know what you're on, but... Sure. <laughs> I guess... Analyze him. Scream at him. I'm gonna activate the lens, though, and I don't really want to know what happens. God damn it. Uh, what do we do? We can... We can move up. I'm going to try and move up here so that I can also participate in attacking the lens. I can't lightning arc the lens, which is weird. All I can do is yell at it, which says it'll do damage, but then it doesn't. I mean, it is a lens. But I don't know how yelling at it would work, but apparently, you know, yelling at people can cause them to die. So, I mean, I'm no lens expert. Okay, I've seen worse battles we're going this, through the gas opinion. cloud so that I can get a charge. It will be done. That was damage. I'll take it. Endure. And we're gonna use sworn enemy. All right. Cyrene, please break this thing. I'll see to, to break it break personally. This. No, that's not what we wanted. Loss, I can get you with that. You're not in the right position for it, though. <laughs> Voice of command. Cassia. It's weird, the little, like, mouse hover over pop-ups when you're using abilities are all appear to be hollow at the moment. Just, just a minus that was a lot of damage. Okay, so Cassia should be able to get out because he's now turned to face another person. I'm not sure it works like that, but let's find out. She's going to provoke an attack of opportunity if she does something either way in that case. Oh, she parried. Good job. Okay. Uh, man. Lidless stare on the, the... Wait, you can... No, we don't want to do that. Held in my gaze on the lens? Does that work? It does. Isn't this a job for the serfs? So, you, screaming at the lens doesn't do anything, but staring at it really hard causes it to shatter. Makes sense. Uh... Can't tell from my sarcasm. No, it does not make sense. I'm not accustomed to being ordered around. Okay. I am now really hoping that this means On it. we can just kill him. So I am just using my turn to stack debuffs, which is gonna last until her next turn. I'm not sure where that is in the order. Cassia, you're done. Okay, now it's your turn. So that was kind of wasted. That's a shame. But I bet we can just kill you with one of these. We'll and do. will this actually what? cause what you to permanently die? Feet. It seems like he's dead. Which leaves just his guard. So yeah, it seems like either destroying or forcing the lenses to activate ends the encounter. Oh, we'll analyze this guy. From the looks of it, it's a guard. I reckon... No, you can't shoot guards in the knee with arrows to was, turn them into guards. It doesn't or... work that way. Um, yeah, the battle sister going down early was a bit of a problem. Um, a tactically sound approach. But hey, we're making we're making do. It's not too bad. It's not great, to be sure. Could shoot him? No, we can't. Then we're just gonna have to charge up, get as far as we can. Victory is imminent. Okay, that's less far than I would have I liked to endure. Okay, Cyrene, if you could get up here. The guy's blinded, so I'm not too concerned about getting shot. Um, I got very little to do, aside from 
trying to shoot him, but he's way out of range for that, so... I, I can do voice of command on nobody. Cool. Uh, could drop this, but none of these are going to be in range. So, we'll just have to wait. Cassia can run up. Can we help hold him in our stair? Yes. Good. That's going to do a lot of damage and immobilize him. We'll do a voice of command on Abelard. And to last, we'll advance. Psychic scream? Is that in range? It is. He's dead. Might trigger a veil degradation, but no, we're good. So, they're dead. Our gentle's back up. That was a, a bit of a fight. And looks like there's somebody here who's going to stand back up. I, I'm, I'm still kind of guessing it's... A, oh, no, it's a vain winter scale. All right. Of course. Yeah, duh. He was... Duh. Oh, my God. You guys are all probably yelling at me like we know that the winter scale dude was here. Um, I sort of forgot that. I had a very long day. I've been up since uh, 4 in the morning because... Uh, I had to work at 4 in the morning. So, I had no sleep. So, if I seem a bit loopy to you, uh, I assure you that's just me normally. But today, it's worse than normal. <laughs> I don't believe we've been properly introduced. Blood is bubbling on the young man's lips, and his voice is barely audible. But even now, it remains melodious and quite courteous. Vain Winterscale of Coronus. Greatly pleased to make your acquaintance. On the rare days that Lord Winterscale visited Urak 5, the station was awash in a mist of warm hues. We were forbidden from meeting each other, but I was delighted still to see such rare colors in my home. Now, however, his colors are darkening, twisting from pain and bitterness. We must help, Lord Captain. We must save the clarity of his soul, for he whose presence makes the world a little brighter deserves no less. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we can do that. Lady Cassia, I presume. Sacred child of House Rosalia. How disgraceful it is that on the day we finally meet, I... Yvain looks away in shame. I find myself not at my best. There is no disgrace in your predicament, Lord Winterscale. The Lord Captain and I met under similarly dreadful and tragic circumstances. Just finish him off? No, uh, we're not gonna do that. Conserve your strength. You are wounded and need help. Wounded? I would have phrased it altogether differently. Tortured and maimed, perhaps. Have you ever had your eyes burned out? This was my first time. I cannot say I recommend the procedure. It, he's either trying to make light of the situation or growing delirious from pain. I can respect that, trying to make light of an awful situation. That's like, that's my coping mechanism for horrible shit. Um, I must take my leave. No. Um... What have they done to you? And the warden, my friend, I tried to convince him to stop the riot. Diplomacy failed. Speaking is a struggle, but he continues stubbornly. Father hates diplomacy, which is why I had to try. Okay. Uh, I must take my leave. I will see to it that assistance is provided to you and that you are escorted from here. He nods, giving into oblivion. I hope you're still... Yeah, he's still alive. He's just not in the best of state. Oh, is that a... Oh, it's not a power sword. I was hoping it was going to be a power sword. Improved body glove. Hey, that's good. All right. Uh, we're going to look around, see... There's, there's other is dead there people to, to loot, so... Um, yeah, there's all kinds of dead people. Oh, look, you're, you have things. Stub revolver. Just a regular old stub revolver. That's not that good. Guards, though. These guys might have something. Black chest plate, Ritobi pattern las guns. We already have some of these. Yes, we do. But hey, they can uh, be added to various shipments, and there's also some proper goods up here, so I guess we can just climb up. Never mind. We won't ask too many questions there, Abelard, about what you just did. That was some uh, that was some warp stuff going on. Okay, set of icons. Like I have no idea what the values of these are, so. Rise to the top, them. or Any get left in the dust. Anything looks fine. Okay, what are, what are these goddamn lenses? Your eye is drawn to the shards of the enormous lens scattered around the broken device. At first, you are uncertain what as to what troubles you, but it's the fucking glass shards that we saw before. I'm almost sure of it. 
Uh, but suddenly the realization hits you. The glass shimmers in a unique way. Just the same way as the shards of the unknown broken object you found near Theodora Valancius' desk. Yep. What's the matter, Lord Captain? Why are you so interested in... Abelar trails off when he notices what you are looking at. He instantly makes the connection. Alright. That's good to know. He's, he's also, like, he's sharp. He's sharp. By the Imperium Saints, it cannot be. Idira bites her lip. I see it too. Whatever the thing in her study was, it was made from the same material as this junk. What? What? Abelard is at loss for words. He takes a moment to collect himself, and all at once they start pouring out in a hasty sputter. It's a mistake. Slander meant to blemish the good name of a person who is now dead and cannot defend herself. First, those minions of the arch enemy murdered Lord Captain Theodora, and now this cannot be tolerated. It will not be tolerated. Come now, Abelard. Remember what she was like? Idira's smile betrays her grief, but at the same time, the strangely knowing. Brazen, assertive. It was like her entire life was a race against fate until fate caught up with her in the end. She would have gone headfirst into a black hole if she had thought it would put her off even one step ahead of everyone else in the Expanse. If we could just find out what she was keeping in her desk and why she went to get it during the attack. Sister Argenta's beautiful face is full of grief. How bitter it is to know that you were born from bad blood. But do not let this knowledge drag you into darkness. Who's she talking to? Idira? The sister's words ring with a genuine, sincere hope that you be blessed- Oh no, it's me. Me. She's talking to me. She does not appear to be shocked by the news of Theodora's possible heresy. Okay, so I'm not making the connection here as to why this might mean- Clearly, Theodora had the glass implements. I was thinking that it's just a connection with whoever assassinated her. But the, the writing was a bit unclear here, I will say. M maybe it's me. Feel free to- uh, point something out in the comments if I missed a, uh, a connection. You know, we all do that. I am a writer. I'm usually pretty good at this, but everyone slips. Especially if you're really fucking tired. But, uh... <laughs> this is very much seeming to imply that she may have accidentally orchestrated her own doom by dabbling in something that she shouldn't have been dabbling in. Like mysterious glass shards. Flex? I don't think it's flex at this point. But there's definitely some sort of relation. Probably a bit of a, uh, like a writing, a writer's influence from, uh, the flex. Life must be so easy for you sanctimonious preachers. A dubious trinket, and you no longer see a person. You see bad blood, an annoying hindrance. There is enough venom in Idira's voice to poison an entire regiment. Okay, calm down. She actually meant something nice with it. Argenta recoils, but the next moment her dark eyes ignite with fury. How dare you admonish me? We are speaking of abetting the arch enemy. A person who has tainted themselves thus can never justify their actions. Sure. Why go through all the trouble of lying, of trying to make sense of anything, when you can just label them as a heretic and call it a day? Except, dear friend, I seem to remember that you didn't mind Theodora so much while you were aboard the ship. You didn't leave her side for even a moment. She rescued you, aided you, and your adoration wilted the moment you heard an accusation sullying her memory. You weren't surprised or upset. You just gave up on her and moved on. Yeah, you got a point there. That's true. Uh, sure. Yeah, uh, Argento's... Like, the, the direction of what she was saying wasn't super clear. I think there's a little bit of wonky writing in this scene. Uh, but nevertheless, interesting developments. Um, God damn it. Yeah, it's because I didn't immediately assume that this was an allegation of heresy. I thought this was, if anything, a point of connection between the people that killed her and what's going on here. So I'm going to say, Idira is right. It is too soon to cast accusations of heresy. Cyrene von Valancius, don't be naive. Theodora kept an unsanctioned witch by her side like a pet. Do you really believe she would think twice about crossing the line in other ways? I mean, no, but 
That doesn't necessarily mean what you think it means. <laughs> but yes, you you do make a valid point there. The crippled man's appearance is ghastly, and yet it is evident he was cared for after his mutilation. Lovely. And what about what about this chap? The mutilated man does not stir bound in his shackles. The plaque near his head reads something. Most holy prophet and optimist Ati Shan. Uh Sucks to be you, Ati Shan. We read your reports. Always keep your eye on the prize. Right, what's in the pit? Your skin crawls as you approach this place. However, there does not appear to be anything of note. Yeah, definitely something was there though. And there's some things in here. Maybe we should have investigated this first, but I think it kind of triggered the moment we walked out. So I don't know if we could have done anything else. Um, but let's let's head there. Let's see what there is to find. We can open this door. These tech is impossible for this. Keep old your wits officer. about you. What we got I here? Medicaid. The, the evidence done. suggests that the victim was killed by poison gas. Okay. The glass-making furnace was used to melt the extracted sand into glass. It must have come from here, then. I mean... Yeah, I don't think that was necessarily implied that it was coming from here. But they were... They were digging something up here. The warden repeatedly came back to the pit, moved all, all of his... command structure down into the pit, and spent a whole lot of time with something. And they're melting sand here into this weird-ass glass. Very sketchy. Whatever's going on here. Very sketchy. Argento's right to be concerned. What do we got here? Another force grenade? Fire grenades. I like those. And I know who's getting them. <laughs> no gas grenades for you. You get fire grenades. Seems to be your thing. Who's gonna get the gas grenades? We could give the gas grenades to uh, Abelard. No, we'll give him a force grenade. We'll give him one gas grenade. And I think I'm gonna take a gas grenade just because I find out after I do my buffings, buffing and, you know, in between the turns where I can use my command abilities, there's not much for me to do. But a noble sword, is that gonna be better than a chain sword? Technically, yes. Ten armor penetration. It's got cleave. Attacks with this sword cost plus one AP. Okay, that's kind of rough. On hit, the sword's attack inflicts the disturbed effect on the target for two rounds. What? Why would it do that? Is it because it's cursed? If the target of the attack is already suffering from the disturbed effect, the attack deals an additional wielder's willpower bonus damage times two. What is your willpower? It's only 30, but we can buff that with prescience. I'm going to give this to him because he's the character that we're going to park in front of some big enemy and he's just going to focus that enemy down, which means this is going to be pretty good there. That means no chain sword for you, but, you know, we can give the chain sword to, uh, to the sister here. I'm sure she won't mind. Um, yeah, looking good. We have a, uh, a superior armor body glove. I might take that myself if I don't already have one, or I might give that to Cassia. Because Cassia needs to get closer. I'm going to give it to Cassia. We're going to ensure that our party has good loot before we upgrade ourselves, apparently. Um, long last? No, no, one, no one's using any of these. So, all right. This can just go to cargo. This is a precise last pistol. This is actually a different type of last pistol. Um... Single shot. Oh, it's a pistol with dead eye shot. So that'd be on good on somebody that's got some ballistic skill. It isn't the sister. Because she's going to just get bolt weapons. He's got his, like, naval pistol. I have awful ballistic skill. It's also because I'm wounded. Perplexed. Hmm. Huh. Visit the void ship to remove. Can be removed and fully healed on the void ship. Yeah, she's got head trauma. Okay, these these injuries are kind of rough. Like that, those are big stat reductions. So we need to be a little bit more careful. If we're on a long mission. I think this mission's done, so it's not going to be a huge issue. But yeah, that's uh, that's kind of bad. I, I don't know if she needs a pistol. Like she's got the the, the held in my gaze, which is just so much better. Bow hammer. 
Yeah, you know what? I, I, I may just. No, but that that is good. The the dead shot step revolver. Fuck it. I'm gonna give it to uh, Plaster. You can have the uh, precise lance pistol. No, I'm not. I'm gonna hold on to it. Somebody else. We'll get more party members, and I don't have to hassle through. Uh, you know who gets what. So what have we here? Can go out this I way. I always have a backup plan. Loot this guard. You just have the basic business. We'll uh, add this to cargo and add that to cargo as well. Don't need anything there. And it doesn't look like there's anything else for us in Let this us area. Interesting developments, to be sure. Yeah. Nothing out here, nothing up there. We can't go up that way, can we? No. Cool area, though. You do kind of see all the way to the edge of the map, which is... Rise uh, to the top. Know, maybe they or can fill that get in. left in the dust. Let's take the main level up. Or go up to the main level. I think we can probably leave by now. So, shall we uh, depart to the barracks? I think so. No, the barracks is where we, we came through. We need to get to the uh, shuttle. I don't think there's a way to go further up. Always keep your eye on the prize. Yeah. Hopefully everything's in order. You found the Scion, right? Your ladyship? The rebellion has been crushed. I have news of your lord. She anxiously pitches forward. Is Lord Winterscale alive? Is he alright? He is safe and in one piece. I shall receive him as a guest on my ship, so ready the shuttle. No, he, he's alive but badly wounded. Help my people get him to my ship. There are glimmers of panic in the pilot's gaze, but she quickly pulls herself together. It will be done immediately. Thank you for letting me know, your ladyship. Alright. Is there money to be made? Let's get off this accursed rock. I don't like it here. Let's never come here again. Maybe even destroy it from orbit. Whatever was going on here was some serious heresy, and while my character might be a little bit more open-minded than, say, Sister Argenta, you know, there's a limit. Permission to report, Lord Captain. Over the past few days, I received several messages from different decks, complaining about anomalous behaviors in the ship's cogitators and servitors. The machine spirits are restless and rebellious, and no tech litany or ritual of pacification can rid them of this obstinacy. The tech priests can deal with the vessel's systems, but the servitors, they make errors in their tasks, disobey orders, change assigned rituals, and sometimes downright freeze as if in trance. I wonder if this is because we didn't get our uh, main tech priest. A click comes through the Vox channel, followed by a weary sigh. Lord Captain, occurrences such as these are caused by errors in cogitator calculations, or have some other sensible explanation. I beseech you not to take after those who whisper about the ship being cursed or possessed. Idira joins the channel and chimes in playfully. Oh, don't start, old man. All these peculiar happenings have long since turned into local legends. The doors slam shut. A lumen starts flickering. Folk have grown used to all that since our resident ghost has decided to up the ante. I'm telling you, things are only going to get worse from here. Alright, rabble-rousing already. The Technomats are inspected. Or the Technomats inspected the servitors and concluded they pose no danger. According to the servants of the Omnissiah, such behavior is caused either by the echoes of minds not completely eliminated, or by manifestations of the machine spirits' as will. Nevertheless, the faulty servitors make the crew's tasks considerably more difficult, and High Factotum Janus Danrock would like to discuss how he should deal with the defective property. He is awaiting your audience on the bridge. Alright, well, um, let's, let's go check on the bridge, I guess. Uh, how do we do that? We just... can do that here, right? Yeah, back to bridge. Um, anything we can check on void ship management? No. Not at the moment. Wait, do we have something else? Macro cannons? Take off. Oh, we could remove them. I mean, why would we do that right now? I don't know. Let's not. But, good to know that we can. Let's return to the bridge, and, uh, 
See if the uh, Evane Winterscale is here. And talk to him. I don't think he's caught up in any of this heresy. I think he was genuinely a good guy, but we do need to worry about corruption getting into him. Who knows what the hell they did to him. Hopefully we can save him. He seems like a decent fellow, and definitely seems like a potential ally within the Winterscale dynasty, who I expect to be antagonistic towards us at some point. And he's clearly antagonistic towards his father, so... Could be good. Could be a good ally for us ourselves. So we'll finish up this business here on the ship, and then uh, I'll end the episode. So it'll be a little bit shorter than uh, some of the behemoth episodes that we've had uh, going around. All right. The auger calibration ritual is complete. The tech priests are heading to the life support chambers. Okay. Um, well, what do you have to say, Avalar? Lord Captain. Nothing. Right Lord now. Captain. All right. Uh, Vigdis, you had something to say? No, I don't need to ask you questions right now. I need to talk to Janus, Janus Danrock. And we could also find... Where's Plas? She should be around. And the, the Battle Sisters should be, like, in one of these corners normally. Oh, and the Navigator is going to be up here, too. Interesting. Um, we could talk to her. But maybe I'll do that in the next episode. Let's talk to Janus Danrock. High Fact Totem Janus Danrock. The High Fact Totem Janus Danrock. Wow, say that five times. Uh, greets you with a cool smile and the merest, merest hint of a bow. Pleasure to see you, Lord Captain. How may, be, how may I be of assistance? Vigdis informed me about the problem with the servitors. What happened? You see, your ladyship, the ship's servitors have been malfunctioning of late. They violate protocols, interrupt their tasks, observe crew members for long periods of time, and move erratically with no meaning or purpose. Generous Danrock nervously pulls on his luxurious frock coat as if it were uncomfortably tight. Had it been a routine technical fault, I would have decided the fate of those servitors myself, but I deemed it necessary to notify you. I do not wish to hide such irregularities from the Lord Captain. Good plan. If you wish to observe the servitors' unusual behavior before you decide their fate, this can be arranged. The majority of the defective units have been delivered to one of the storage compartments, pending your decision. Yes, bring me to them. I wish to take a look at these servitors before deciding their fate. As you wish, Your Ladyship. This could be an assassination attempt. Oh, whoa, this is different. Um... And you know what? I like it. I like it. We don't always need to be brought to an area. A, a bit of just a text-based thing where you make a decision at the end that can have some sort of consequence. Cool. That's a simpler way of doing it, and I'm okay with that. Alright. Sector data unavailable. Region data unavailable. Location Von Valencia's flagship Lower Decks. Material report of tech phenomenon that was observed during the Lord Captain's visit to Bay AKN 108 from the words of High Fact Totem Generous Danrock. When her ladyship arrived at the scene, she found the servitors in the same position that they had assumed after they had been corralled into the bay, all standing in a long spiraling line. Spiraling line and facing the center of their strange formation. The moment her ladyship crossed the threshold of the gate of the bay gate, their bodies jerked into motion, all as one, as if obeying a command. The servitors turned to face the Lord Captain. The technomats tasked with their overseeing with the overseeing of the defective units even reached for their weapons. But then the servitors went still, just as abruptly, staring at her ladyship with vacant eyes. Spiraling pattern. Oh boy. Uh... Oh, this is Generous Danrock's... This is from his perspective. Interesting. Uh, so, the, the, her ladyship, uh, demanded a report of the defective unit's status from the Technomats. Let's get some more information. The Technomats' long-winded and detailed reports could have summarized a single key point. Despite the servitor's abnormal behavior, they were still quite capable of carrying out tasks, and therefore circumstances did not call for their termination. Uh, oh boy. Um... Order that one of the servitors be disassembled and its components investigated. Yeah, I think we need to get a lot of information, as much as we possibly can here. 
The group of Technomats hurried to act on the Lord Captain's command. The servitor's mechanical parts separated with clicks, snaps, and hisses. The sutures between its wrinkled, pale flesh and its augments were laid disgustingly bare. We watched the Technomats do their work, and could see every centimeter of the servitor's stiff muscles, abounding with valves and cavities pierced by countless cords and tubes. The disassembly and analysis complete, the Technomats concurred. The unit was in working order. Nothing in the dissected body that lay before us could prove any provide any insight into the reason behind the defects. I should make note one more thing. At that moment, all of us present discovered that it was not just the eyes, but the hands and heads of some of the servitors were now shaking too. It was as if the mechanized servants were overcome with some primordial terror. Jesus. All present held their breath, disturbed by this sight. We waited for the Lord Captain to speak. I am going to approach the servitors. And take several steps towards them. Immediately, the servitors, each and every one of them, stepped towards the Lord Commander in perfect unison. They mimicked her movements with frightening precision. The rogue trader halted in place, and after a moment's thought, waved her hand. And the servitors, just as synchronously, repeated that gesture as well. When the Lord Captain turned quizzically to the Technomats, so did the servitors, as if mocking her. Whatever the Lord Captain did, be it an incline of the head, a wave of the hand, or a step to the side, the defective units repeated it without a moment's delay or hesitation, like a grotesque marionettes controlled by an unseen puppeteer. We observed this mime unfold in distressing bafflement for nearly a minute until the servitors finally came to a stop. Not sensing any threat from them, the rogue trader approached with confidence. The Lord Captain examined the servitors. As high factotum, it was I who prompted that entire inspection, and thus it was my duty to follow the captain. As we stepped closer, we noticed a fascinating irregularity. The servitor's pupils, normally still, were shaking wildly. Their bulging veins were pulsating under their collar, over under their copper collars, inscribed with their past offenses. Uh, servitors, by the way, are generally former prisoners that are uh, lobotomized and, you know, grafted to serve very specific functions. They're functionally tech zombies. Uh, it was as if those mindless half-machines were locked in a perpetual state of extreme tension. A visibly shaken Technomat behind us proposed that the human souls had awakened within the servitors' bodies. After a long slumber deep within their lobotomized brains, formerly bereft of intelligence, they had attained awareness, feeling, and understanding. After a pause, the Technomat added that the servitors used used to function properly, and that no one had been able to explain the change in their behavior. Her gaze still trained on the motionless, but animate half-machines and half-people. What? A reticle suddenly draw? Suddenly drew an iridescent blade, one I had seen before, and, as if following some unheard command, plunged it into the near circle. Oh, no, 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 no. Stepped away from the servitors. What do you mean, I have an iridescent blade? Should I be aware of this, or is this new information? Let me know in the comments. Probably won't be able to read it until like three episodes from now, but... I mean, I remember, uh... Voidfear poked us with something like this. That's what caused the whole fucking problem in the first place. That's when something got into our head. Sort of whispering about the dawn and the edge of daybreak and all that. I'm gonna step away from the servitors. And, uh, I'm going to announce my decision. Her ladyship looked at me with unwavering resolve, and it was that confidence that wrenched me out of the nightmarish stupor that had me tensely observing the scene unfolding before me. The Lord Captain gave the order to dispose of the servitors so that their human souls may be released from torment. Yep, I don't know what's wrong with them. We're not just gonna destroy them, let's just dis dispose of them correctly. The Lord Captain's command was executed post-haste. All defective units were incinerated in furnaces, and their remains were expelled into the void. The crew was provided with replacement servitors, and soon forgot all about the destroyed units per 
peculiarities, yet this incident haunts my memories to this day. With the fate of the defective servitors decided, nothing could now distract the Lord Captain from her mission. That was fucking creepy. All right. Uh, yeah, that was cool. That was cool. The implications only get worse. I don't know what the hell Voidfear did to us. That was... Yeah. So apparently we just have one of these blades. I am very drawn to make a connection between these blades and the um, Athames. Is it the, the Athames or the Anathemes? I can't remember. They're the knives used by the word bearers to um, cut open the skin of reality. Did I not make a connection somewhere in this plot line to word bearers before? Maybe. There, there's clearly a Zinch thing going on. Like, Voidfear... Voidfear drew a Zinchian symbol. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, if you're still new to Warhammer 40k, Zinch is the chaos god of change, manipulation, and sorcery. I, I mentioned that earlier, but, you know, been been a while since then. Uh, and the word bearers are the legion of... Traitor Space Marines, so Chaos Space Marines, that instigated the entire Horus Heresy, and is they're the reason why there are Chaos Space Marines. Uh, they worship demons, and basically pave the way for the Dark Gods to begin to ensnare humanity again. Uh, they also wrote the Lectitio Divinitatis, which was the book that the Ecclesiarchy bases its entire holy texts off of, so there's a bit of irony there that the Arch Traitors, the Arch Enemy, are the ones that... <laughs> pen to the framework for the Imperial cult, <laughs> but uh, best not look too deeply into that. <laughs> that's heresy. But uh, that's where we're going to end today's episode off. That was wonderfully creepy, very, very eerie, very unsettling. I really like where this story is going. Wherever it's going, I don't know where it's going, but, but it's got me very fascinated and I just want to play more. Uh, but alas, uh, I, I need to go to bed pretty soon, because I have another very early day tomorrow, so, uh, yeah, sucks to be me, I guess. Um, anyways, drop this video a like if you've enjoyed it, and thank you to everybody that has been, uh, following this series. It's, uh, you know, been actually doing decently well, so, uh, we will continue. And thanks to everybody that has been, uh, leaving comments. Once again, I record in advance, so I haven't read your comments, uh, if they're out on the last couple of episodes, so that is why I haven't responded to them. Or, wait, no, how does that work? I don't know. Time is a liquid to me right now. None of this makes any sense. All right, guys, Ash Herder out. Bye.